Yes, this is a counterpoint video to Gary McDade's lesson of called um, um, You Cannot Be Saved Without a Knowledge of the Bible. Um, um, so, um, but he uses that phrase 30 times, and every time he uses it, I want you to note that uh, in the Bible, only Holy Scriptures is mentioned twice. And in this one passage, I'm going to talk about inspiration verses. I'm going to talk about this is um, uh, only mentioned three times in the whole Bible that you can find something that is a surety talking about the whole Bible. Okay? Other than that, it's going to say the truth, the word of the Lord that can be messengers, angels, angels. Um, and it will say the word of God, and it will say God's word, um, and so um, and the engrafted word, which is is put on like a tree limb and grafted in. Um, uh, they of course uh, uh, anyway the the grafting you in uh, word cannot be every word of the Bible. No one knows every word of the Bible. So it cannot be every word of the Bible grafted in. So almost all the verses he gives are easily debunked by knowing that in the Bible there's only three that are referring to the Holy Scriptures. And in the context, it, it explains what it's talking about, Holy Scriptures. And so um, I have to do that. Now... Um, the ones that are very important to go over um, are the verse of all scriptures give by inspiration of God profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, the text says. But I want you to understand that it's doctrine of righteousness, reproof of righteousness, correction of righteousness. Because if you said the Bible was for instruction, and didn't say instruction in righteousness, then you would say no, because I cannot build a house by looking into the Bible. But if you say instruction in righteousness and correction in righteousness, then you can use all scriptures to guide you into a righteous way. And reproof will rebuke you in a righteous way all scriptures can rebuke uh, the thinking of man. And so a uh, doctrine of, of righteousness is found in all scriptures. Support doctrine of righteousness. So, uh, but as far as doctrine is not in all scriptures. And so that's what I was telling you about when it mentions the truth. Throughout these books that were written to churches... They, you can underline truth, truth, truth throughout the whole book. And God's word and truth, our word, it says, and the engrafted word. And you can highlight this, the truth, the truth that comes up. So that message is there. That covers that one. I want to cover um, um, that... Um, Whenever you read that these um, Hebrews um, 10, 25, and 21, this is a point that, that, uh, that you should go to church all the time because it says, and they start reading where it says, not forsaking the assembly as the manner of some is. <coughs> Let me back up. The verse before it says, Provoking one another to love and to good works. And there are six passages of marking someone or withdrawing from them and not being equally yoked with them. And all six passages pertain to eating and praying over your food that it's to love and good works. And this is found in the text. Whenever you look at separating yourselves from those, and it listed there at the end of 2 Timothy, all of the reprobable things, uh, 
the disputings um, and railings and things that these people will do. So, uh, whenever we're talking about um, <clears throat> assembling with the cells and not assembling as the manner of sums is, in the scripture, eating with them and praying over their food is the manner of uh, that they were supposed to assemble together to eat and to pray over their food, that it's love and good works to provoke one another to love and good works. Now that's the verse before this one where the theologians and my father start reading at not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Now, now that you know the context being that they assemble to eat and that if they ever withdrew from someone it was because they were not having they have this disputing railings and all these different things that were listed and uh, also covet they use covetousness and idolatry and extortion and they pray over their food in those things those matters they don't even pray and they they use those things to uh, for themselves and uh, that's how they serve the creature so anyway um, now that you know the context, and then also you have to understand after it says uh, assembling of yourselves together, then it says uh, uh, um, as in, in as much as you see the day approaching, and the day has to be the judgment day, and and so if he's talking about the assembling. In order for the theology to work, he has to be talking about Sunday because the next verse they use if he sinned willfully. And so they want to say that you're sinning willfully by not being in the assembly. But see, it's the manner of those some that never go to assembly because they are using extortion and they are not eating with the, them in the assembly. They are not eating and praying. And so uh, that's what the assembling is. And so the day, I commentary it to be the judgment day. Because, uh, and so if he's talking about assembling and then talks about judgment day, it makes it more clear that the willful sins are sins that are, 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 are major sins that separate you like Ten Commandment sins that separate you from God in righteous uh, way because of your behavior. Not, not going to an assembly, but at the same time, the reason these people didn't go to assembly, it was the manner of them to not go because they were so unrighteous and evil and the scriptures explains that, uh, and so uh, so that is a lesson in in w what is going on here. And also, uh, my father uses this to say, "Do you think Paul would stand by a man that would not go to Sunday school?" Well, let me tell you this. Do you think Paul would stand by a man that thinks Sunday school and Sunday is the only day to be approaching and to be assembling? I don't think so. And that he would that he would use commentary and theological belief systems to say that the only day you are to assemble is Sunday because they got together to eat and they also on an axe it tells you they sold every man his possessions and continued daily and and they also uh, they fasted day and night they warmed day and night they laboring day and night and supplications and prayers day and night and there's those other passages in Acts 4 where they sold everything uh, to be with the saints. So, uh, to say that the day is only meaning worship day, Sunday, you are mistaken because they came together every day and it's in the scriptures more than this. It is all throughout those scriptures that they 
that they did not just only worship on Sunday. That was supported by taking up the, the collections because they were meeting every day and taking up collections every day. And they decided to do that once a week. And so you cannot mean that Sunday is the only day. Now, you can try to say that the day means judgment day, but then you're going to have to allow that willful sin is the sin that will be judging your life in the judgment day, which is what I'm trying to tell you here. And so um, <clears throat> that is the text covered on, on that passage. Um, and most of these others are about obeying the truth, and then this other one that he got into it with the Baptist preacher and he said he did not read the washing and regeneration. Well, they have their own theology behind that. And it's the proper theology that the washing and regenerating. See, that word means to make uh, to make a new regenerating means to make a new. And that does not happen by a bathtub bath because John's gospel was, was uh, not a mightier baptism. He said that himself, that there is a mightier baptism than water. And so getting in water will not do anything. The, the, uh, the, the, the African evangelist that was on my father's program tells about how they set the, the tub up in the, and baptized thousands of people that, that, that don't learn anything. They just want to get out of jail uh, in the jails over there in Africa. And so baptizing you does not do anything. But this washing and regenerating is means to make a new. And that comes with the spiritual baptism that Jesus brought. Um, and so the fire and the spirit that is a mightier baptism. Now, uh, he, didn't, he didn't mention that, but that's what the Baptists believe about that. They didn't put it in the track because they, they knew a water baptism person or somebody may think that you're going to have to be washed in water. And they don't want to proclaim that water saves you, and that is the truth. Uh, water does not save you. You can't go proclaiming that water saves you because everyone takes a bath every day now in 2,000 years later. So, um, also, um, um, I wanted to read um, uh, Ephesians 2, 10. Um, uh, and um, I think I said about the times of this ignorance, God winked at. And the, in the text, it says in verse 29, uh, my father tears that one and throws that one away verse 29 um, that it, it, the, the reason that God had winked the sin he winked at was using man's devices like these verses like only reading verse 30 and not reading verse 29 that says the man's devices to carve an image for God of wrath and then you read only that he wants you to repent and it makes you look like God is wrathful by only reading that verse. But he says you must repent for carving him into an image. And so that's what you are to repent for if you read verse 29 in Acts 17. And uh, now I want to read Ephesians 1.10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and in earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who walketh all things, worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So we are predestined for heaven and earth to be one in all things. So I had to close with that. Uh, please uh, understand and make comments. Um, I did not cover every verse, but um, I assure you I have them all written down here. Every verse he read and the context will debunk itself for all the verses of understanding the truth. Uh, if, if there's any confusion about the verses that he gave, 
and about me not debunking them. I have covered every one of them and debunked every one of them.